Over the past 20 years, a lot of things have changed in the waterfowl world. Our standard of excellence isn't one of them. We have been proudly family owned and operated since 1999. GK calls. We don't want to be the biggest, just the best. Hi, I'm Elite Series Pro Greg Hackney in this edition of Michiana Outdoors. You know, I want to talk about a technique that works really well for me, actually all over the country. Anytime you have a grass lake, you know, a lake that has milfoil, hydrilla, I mean, there are all types, cabbage, pretty much any type of grass. And the deal is, is using a heavy jig to fish those deeper weed edges. Uh, you know, a lot of these natural lakes in this part of the country, you know, the water, you know, you'll have grass out 10, 12, even out to 15 foot deep. And uh, the way I like to fish it is with a really heavy jig. This is actually an ounce and a quarter hack attack jig with a rage crawl trailer. Um, <clears throat> and it's a real fast way to fish, and it's a, a real fast way to find schools of fish that are, you know, located outside. You know, not necessarily all the time will they be on the very outside edge. Sometimes they'll be just inside. But I like to keep my boat with my electronics, you know, just outside the grass so I can tell I don't want to be up in the grass because I want to know exactly where that fish is coming from. Is he coming from that outside edge or is he just inside? Uh, and, and basically, the way I do that, this is my 7-Eleven Hack Attack flipping stick. And the reason I use such a long rod, it's not necessarily that you can't get those same fish out on a 7 or 7.6, 7 but I can control a lot more line with this 8-foot rod. You know, this rod's almost 8-foot long. I can control a lot more line with it, you know, than I can a shorter rod. And that's one of the reasons for me using that longer rod. Uh, and basically what I'm doing, I've got the boat positioned where, you know, I, the, the, the grass line is a relatively short pitch away. And so when I pitch that jig and it hits the water, I'll do that again. When I pitch the jig and it hits the water, I roll my rod back with slack line. You know, when I pick my rod up, I'm not pulling the jig. If you look, I'm throwing all that slack in the line. And what that allows it to do, it allows that jig to free fall you get that fast rate of fall. That's the reason for using a, an ounce or an ounce and a quarter jig is because you want that fast rate of fall. Well, the only way to do that is when you pitch it out there is to throw that slack in my line. Of course, I threw it over the rod. Damn, that didn't look good, did it? But, uh, but by pitching that jig out there and then rolling that slack, that's where that big rod comes in because I can, I can leave all that line slack. Now, I have that braid, which I use braid myself personally. It's a personal preference, but I use braid 99% of the time. I can see that slack braid laying on the water and that jig's falling because 99% of the time, that's when your bites come on that, on that, on the, on, you know, fishing this technique. So now my jig has fell, you know, real naturally because of the, uh, the slack line. And I can tell if a fish gets, if it stops too soon, if I know the water's 10, 12, 15 foot deep, after a couple flips, I know how long it takes that jig to get to the bottom each time. So if it stops short, you know, then I can pick up quick, and I like a seven to one reel for that, and pick up and feel and see if there's one on there. Uh, because this technique, I'm basically, you know, I'm pitching that jig out there on a the slack line. I'm letting it hit the bottom. I probably lift it up a time or two. You know, especially in clear water conditions, the water's relatively warm. You know, when you're dealing with water temperatures that say are below 55, a lot of times when that jig hits, you know, I'll have to fish it a little bit. You know, I have to fish it back a little bit to get a bite. But during the warmer months of the year, summertime and the fall, when those fish are aggressive, you know, basically I'm just whipping that jig out there, slacking that line, letting it hit the bottom, and reeling it up. A lot of times what will happen early in the morning when you're doing this, those fish will be on the bottom. And there's certain times of the year they suspend. And, when, and once I start getting those suspended fish to bite, you, you'll know because they'll be catching that jig, say, halfway down on the fall. Then I just let it, I still, even though I know they're catching it halfway down, I still let it free fall all the way to the bottom. And then when it, I basically just start swimming it up. Basically just like if you were casting and swimming a jig, and what I'm doing then, I'm getting, I'm getting two shots at those fish. I'm getting that shot when I flip it out there and it falls past them, and then I'm getting a, a second chance at them by swimming it up past them. Because a lot of times, depending on how he's turned, he could be turned, you can't tell which direction he's facing. You know, you want to think he's always sitting in the grass facing out, but that's not necessarily true. He may be looking down, so the jig may go behind him, so I'm giving a second chance, you know, at him on the way back up. Um, it takes a lot of practice to get used to using a jig that big, because a lot of people, it feels so heavy, but, it, it, but typically you fish with it just a little bit, 
it comes pretty natural. It, you'll get used to the weight of the jig. That's the biggest problem most people have with a big jig is how it feels. It feels heavy. Well, most of the, you know, when you take a four or five pound large mouth or four or five pound small mouth that's living out here on these outside grass lines, you know, that jig weighs an ounce and a quarter. That fish is used to eating prey that weighs five, six, seven, eight. I mean, you know, it, it's not uncommon for a big large mouth, you know, to, to eat a wild shine or a perch that weighs close to a pound. So think about that. And you, you think, well, that's an ounce and a quarter. That's so heavy. That's actually a relatively light bait for what that fish is used to eating. 